My name is Eric Thrasher, hearing officer for San Francisco Public Works. Cerise Waiters is the clerk of this hearing today. Today's hearing is being recorded and a sign-in sheet is on the table on the side of the room there. Uh, please be sure to sign in for, your re for our records and also uh, we can contact you in the future regarding uh, the items on the docket today. This public hearing is being held to consider the following four items. Order number 201709 to consider the removal of one street tree adjacent to the property at 2447 Noriega Street. Order number 201710 to consider the removal of one street tree adjacent to the property at 2940 Larkin Street. Order number 201711 to consider the removal of one street tree adjacent to the property at 501 Noriega Street. And order number 201712 to consider an appeal from the property owner for the fine issued for illegal pruning of 33 significant trees along Santa Clara Avenue and St. Francis Wood. My job as a hearing officer is to gather the facts for the hearing item, to listen to your testimonies, and to help our director of public works make determinations. I will not be making any decisions today. Instead, I will forward the findings from today's hearings and make my recommendations to the director. The director will make the final determinations. When the director's determinations are made, the department will notify you of them. Therefore, if you want to be notified, please do be sure to sign in. The hearing will proceed as follows for the following four cases. First, I will ask Public Works staff of the Bureau of Urban Forestry to speak and to present the case. Then the property owner or the appellant or applicant may speak, followed by any member of the public or witness who, who wishes to speak. Then the department, if the department would like to address any comments or questions, may return and speak. Finally, the property owner or appellant or applicant may again speak if he or she has any rebuttals. Each speaker will have up to three minutes, minutes to speak. The clerk will monitor the time for all speakers. When you f hear the first bell, it means that you have 30 seconds left to speak. A second louder bell will signal that the time is up. Comments and questions should be addressed to me and not to the department or the applicant. If you cannot finish your comments within the allotted time, you may submit written testimony to me by the end of this hearing. If I feel that a question is warranted, I will ask the question. After all comments are completed, I will close the item. We will now begin with the hearing, and I'd like to start with case number 201709 that needs interpretation to consider the removal of one street tree adjacent to the property at 2447 Noriega, Noriega Street. Public Works will make its presentation. Good morning, uh, my name is Susan Naberry. I'm an urban forestry inspector with the Bureau of Urban Forestry. And before we get into the specific cases, uh, we'll be going through some background information um, for the basis of these fines. So Public Works Code Article 16 is the urban forestry ordinance and it spells out the protection of trees and landscape material and it defines injury or destruction to trees um, and it is prohibited. Um, so it shall be unlawful for any person to intentionally, maliciously, or through gross negligence injure a significant tree, landmark tree, or street tree. Um, and the removal of a tree uh, under city order or removal in accordance with a permit issued to section 806.810 or 810A are exempt, which means you need a removal permit application which is approved by the Bureau of Urban Forestry. So again, removal, um, you need a removal permit to remove trees in the city of San Francisco, street, landmark, and significant trees. An abutting property owner who desires a permit to remove a street tree shall apply to the department on the designated form. The department may grant or deny the permit. If the department grants a true removal permit, it shall require that a street tree or trees of equivalent replacement value to the one removed be planted in place of the removed tree. So there's one, um, there's a newer section of Article 16 and construction work. Uh, protection of trees are, is required. Um, so this kind of goes hand in hand with removals um, during construction. If a tree is illegally removed, um, you know, by default, it's also not protected. 
Um, so if excavation, construction, or street work is planned within the drip line of a significant tree, a landmark tree, or any tree on a street, whether it's publicly owned, um, it shall be adequately protected. So if any construction work results in the injury, damage to such tree, the responsible parties may be subject to penalties. And that, you know, that also kind of overlaps with illegal removal. So we have definitions. Um, so injure or injury shall mean any act which harms or damages a tree, including but not limited to impact, cutting, carving, painting, transplanting, or knocking over. Um, injurious attachment of any rope, wire, nail, advertising poster, or any other contrivance to a tree subject to the provisions of this article. And the key here is intentionally or negligently allowing any gaseous liquid or solid substance. Um, so it, whether or not you intend to or it's just through gross negligence, um, it's still a violation of Article 16. Um, and this includes pruning, which in and of itself will kill or cause a tree to decline, or severing all or part of a tree. So we have best management practices. They're in accordance with um, the International Society of Arboriculture and our ANSI standards. Um, so you shall not remove more than 25% of the tree canopy each year. Um, do not remove more than 25% of the foliage on a branch or limb each year. And this stresses the tree. It also produces weakly attached branches. And so people often complain that they have to keep topping their tree because it keeps dropping branches. Um, but the topping initially is what has caused these weakly attached branches to fail. And another key here is to not cut back to a branch that is less than one third or one half the size of, an, of the branch. Um, so if it's less than that, you're essentially doing like a heading topping stub cut. And the branch uh, that you're cutting to is too small to take over as the leader for the branch that you're severing. So it's important to selectively remove branches throughout the tree and not just the lowest branches or the highest branches. And um, removing like branches you know, in the lower canopy and throughout the canopy you know, until the end is called like lion tailing and that essentially produces a lot of end weight. So it's really important to selectively prune for structure and not just for these ideas such as you know, air through the crown, which you know, is kind of an outdated idea. So um, don't top trees. So you can see that this is a this is kind of an example of a topped tree. Um, there's no like laterals that the tree has been pruned to. 100% um, of the canopy has been removed. And those cuts are too large for the tree to compartmentalize and heal. Um, so it basically creates an injury for pathogens. So what you see here are the stress sprouts uh, produced from a ficus tree that was topped. And um, people often say, oh, look, their tree is recovering. Look, it has leaves. It's fine. Um, this is a stress response. So if you're going to say that your tree is doing this, therefore it's still healthy, that is not the case. The tree, over millions of years of evolution, has created this response for when it loses a critical branch or um, amount of canopy. And this is a stress response. And it, it taps into reserve sugars. And so anytime you tap into your reserves, you're stressing the tree. So even trees that seem to have good vigor or vitality by having a stress response can still ultimately fail. And uh, this tree has ultimately died even though it's put out this stress response. It didn't really have enough reserve sugars to recover. The other thing topping does is produce poor structure. So you can see here this tree has very poor structure, has included bark, it has codominant stems, it has decay, it has all of the above. Um, a tree like this is prone to limb failure and you can see where all those limbs meet, that is the topping, that is the cut. Um, from the tree, so that is like where the top tree was topped. So where all those limbs meet, that is the topping cut. And all those stress sprouts have eventually been allowed to grow into branches. Um, so that produces weakly attached limbs. So it also causes decay. As I mentioned, those large cuts can't be closed or compartmentalized by the tree because it's not near a, like a lateral and it's too big in proportion to the trunk. So essentially what that does is creates this opening where bacteria and fungi can 
enter, and it eventually causes decay throughout the main stem, and sometimes all the way down to the root. And just to be clear, topping is not the same as pollarding. Pollarding is done to specific species, such as a London plane tree. Um, and it is done very, very young at the nursery. And you can see the, on the photo on the, in the left, the London plane trees have developed a callus at the end of the limbs there from the repeated pollarding that has occurred at the nursery. The tree on the right didn't develop that because it was top late in life, and it will never develop those calluses. Um, that's species specific, and in addition, it has to be done very, very early. Uh, another complaint we get is uh, power lines. Uh, PG&E is fully responsible for pruning trees around power lines. So if there's high voltage, the PG&E will prune for that. If there's low voltage, the tree can touch that as long as it's not causing strain or abrasion. And again, if it is, PG&E will prune that also. The only thing the city is really responsible for for street trees is that service drop going to the house from the power line. Um, and again, trees can touch that. As long as there's no strain and abrasion, it doesn't really need to be pruned or topped for that. It can kind of grow th go through the tree. So I want to talk a little bit about Street TSF, um, also known as Prop E. So in 2016, we had a ballot measure that passed. Um, it transferred responsibility for maintaining street trees and repairing tree-related sidewalk damage um, from property owners to the city. So in passing of this measure, um, we created Street Tree SF, a citywide street tree maintenance program managed by Public Works. Um, and it's an $18 million set aside in the general fund. Um, in preparation for Street Tree SF, um, a tree census was completed that inventoried and assessed the condition of approximately 125,000 street trees. Um, so that's a lot of trees. And if you think about it, we just took the maintenance back in July 1st, 2017. And so if we've had this urban forest, we've been growing urban forest for several decades, um, but it wasn't always the responsibility of the city. So if you think about it, you know, trees that are 30, 40 years old um, may not have ever been pruned by the city. And so what we're saying is we're essentially asking for your patience while we prune these 125,000 street trees. Um, and it really only has been two years since we've taken over the maintenance. So the census data is being used to populate a routine proactive tree pruning schedule for the city's nearly 125,000 street trees. And the data has allowed us uh, to prioritize areas of the city where the need for tree maintenance is highest. So our goal is to ensure everyone's safety in the public right of way. Uh, one street tree ramp SF ramp up is complete and all of the street trees in San Francisco have been serviced. A schedule will be established where we prune the trees every three to five years. So yes, we have um, essentially pruned about 24% of the trees and I think that's um, you know, people don't really see it if it's not in their neighborhood, but I think that's quite a lot of progress. Um, so we've been very busy, and um, we do ask for the public's patience while we prune 125,000 street trees. <laughs> so we do, um, we put out door hangers when we prune street trees, and we have um, our schedule online. Um, and again, like, we're kind of talking about routine pruning. Um, we're generally not prioritizing things like, like sign clearance and, and things that are aesthetic. Uh, we're pruning for structure and um, health and safety. So again, we've put out these do not prune. Uh, we're asking people not to prune their own street trees because we have the maintenance responsibility. So um, because of all this, too, we have um, a tree care class. So um, if after the hearing, um, the appellant agrees to a street, uh, the tree care class, a reduction uh, of, in the fine for illegal pruning or removal of a street tree can be applied. So that's for both illegal pruning or removal of a street tree. And it teaches about the benefits of trees and the benefits of proper tree pruning. 
Um, so we kind of review Street Tree SF, and there's a fee um, for $197 to cover the cost of the class and goes to um, Adopt a Tree Fund as well. Um, with that said, I would like to begin um, the individual cases. Um, so I hope that explains the basis for our fines. Um, the idea of illegal pruning, removal, the idea of neglect or, or malicious intent and, and why we issue these fines. And, and the fact that San Francisco values its street trees and so does the public, and that is why Street Tree SF was passed. Okay. So order number 201709. 2447 Noriega Street, um, and it's to consider an appeal uh, for the property owner from the property owner for the fine issued for the illegal pruning of one street tree adjacent to the property at 2447 Noriega, and the fine levied is $2,122. Um, this we actually came across this because a member of the public reported this. Uh, this is a tree before the topping. Um, you can see uh, it's kind of, it looks like it may have been recovering um, from like a past topping. It's very full canopied. Um, again, though, it does meet our clearance guidelines. Um, so it's not a priority at this time. time. Um, unfortunately, when we received the service request, this is what we found. Uh, the tree was topped. Um, it looked like by the time we saw the tree, it had some stress response. Um, there's a stub cut. So there's a, there you can see the stub cuts there. Um, and then the stress response, and you know, at least 70% of the canopy had been removed. Um, so like I said, those stub cuts allow um, decay to enter those limbs, and then you're also stressing the tree by removing the canopy. Um, so to be consistent with how we handle similar cases, uh, we issued the fine for $2,122 for the illegal pruning of one city-maintained street tree. Thank you. Uh, is the property owner present? Okay. If the property owner isn't present, would any member of the public care to speak on this case? Very well. Um, I will then close this hearing and we can proceed with the second hearing. Um, and we're going to double check, but we believe that this person may um, may have had some other circumstances that prevented them from coming. So okay. we'll just double check and ask them if they would like to submit documentation or have us reschedule. All right, thank you. Okay, order 201710, 2940 Larkin Street. And this is to consider an appeal from the property owner for the fine issued for the illegal pruning of one street tree adjacent to the property at 2940 Larkin Street. And the fine levied is $2,122. So this is the tree. It's a May 10 Borea. Um, and you can see it has like some interesting growth. It has a lot of sprouts. Um, so if I were to prune this tree, I would selectively choose the best attached sprouts, um, try to re recover its uh, structure. And, and when you do that, you reduce competition between all the sprouts that are coming up from that old topping cut and you can kind of produce better attached limbs and it'll put the tree will put the energy towards the sprout that remains when you remove the competition. Um, and that's kind of how you re would help this recover. Um, unfortunately, when the inspector found the tree, it was topped completely again and 100% of the canopy was removed. Um, back to those remaining cuts, um, this definitely constitutes as illegal removal, 100% of the canopy being removed is um, far beyond IAC standard, and um, we're not really clear on the objective of this pruning because, like I said, if you were to, you know, if you're worried about dro branches dropping, you try to restructure this tree um, and select those sprouts. Um, but instead, the tree is topped. So to be consistent with how we handle similar cases, uh, we issued the fine for um, $2,122. May I have the property owner or appellant approach? <clears throat> Hello. Good morning. I am the property owner, Bradford Whitaker. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, could you scroll back to the photo with the foliage? Thank you. 
Um, prior to my ownership, that tree was pruned to its current condition. And this is what resulted. I believe the reason that tree was pruned prior to my ownership was from my neighbor's view. Okay. Okay. So you can see that the tree came back with quite a bit of vigor. Is that, I, I assume this is stress returning, right? Um, this is, this this is, is before, this is our before photo. Yeah. From before yeah, yeah, the yeah, topping. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's the topping. Right. <clears throat> so I don't believe the tree's dead. I think it's going to come back just like you saw it before because it certainly did with almost a very aggressive return. But whether that's here or there, that's really not the point. Um, this tree has been invading my sewer line. So is, is there a way to put this on the screen, sir? That's a picture of a scoped sewage lateral by this gentleman. You can see the adjacent adjacency to the tree itself. And uh, there's multiple shots showing multiple different roots intruding. And here it just shows you that kind of when I did my inspection. And that red circle says, you know, we need to replace this sewer. Uh, how does that work with street trees? Um, on beta sewage line, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, um, I believe any damage uh, caused by the tree is paid for by the by the city. I'm not sure if sewer laterals, though, falls under that. I'd have, have to ask one of the bureau representatives uh -huh. to speak to that. But okay. we can we can bring them back up and ask but, them. Okay. So I'm, I'm not sure, you know, the, the sentencing or the... The title of this hearing said, consider removal of a tree? Yeah, I believe it meant to say the illegal pruning of the street tree. Oh, so that's a mistake. I'm, that's my assumption, yes. Um, well, would at any like rate, to consider removal to get those roots if you, kind of to stop them invading? I don't know if how you to wanna, do this. If you want to remove the tree, you would need to apply for a permit with, with Buff. Would that be the city's uh, yeah, cost Bureau, or my cost? Bureau of Urban Forestry. But we better, if we can, just keep the keep this limited to the scope of this okay. hearing which is about the the pruning right. can you speak a little bit to the pruning of this tree the recent pruning not the one prior to your ownership uh actually no i can't because i have to live in that street okay so you you don't have any comment for the bureau as to why the tree was pruned uh, my assumptions would only point fingers. I see. So you're saying you didn't prune the tree yourself or contract with an arborist? I don't know who did. Okay. But you did not prune the tree I yourself? I did not. Okay. Hmm. But I would love to have that tree removed because of this sewage invasion. Okay. So the, a removal process is definitely something that the, the property owner works out with the Bureau. And okay. it's a matter of just processing paperwork and, and making uh -huh. your, your claim and you're stating the reasons you want to remove it. Um, as far as the pruning, you're saying you didn't prune it, you're not sure who pruned it. So you think that someone on the street may have contracted with a arborist to come and prune your tree for you? That doesn't look like an arborist's work. No, it doesn't, but there have <laughs> been some pretty bad arbor cuts in the city. <laughs> so you think someone may have gone out there and potentially... Somebody pruned it. But not you. Exactly. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, if I end up levying this fine, I would like to go to that class. I'm interested. Mm -hmm. I, like, I would love Tree care class. more knowledge. Yeah, I okay. like that. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I'll have it if you have nothing else to say. Um, Thank you for your time coming in. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody, anyone from the public who would wish to speak on this case? May I speak with a representative of the Bureau? Uh, yes, Susan Albury, Urban Forestry Inspector. 
Would this be a scenario where the property owner could attend a street care class for a discount? Uh, yes. Yes, it would be. Um, I just wanted to clarify a couple things. The city does not cover sewer damage. Um, and we don't, the science doesn't really show that pruning a tree and removing canopy will slow root growth. Okay, so any, any street tree incursion into sewer lines that are laterals is not responsibility of the city? Correct. Um, if a street tree happens to be um, sitting really close to a sewer where the work just can't be performed without removing the tree, the city will remove the tree, but the city won't take responsibility for the actual for damage. Uh, damage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, one other thing, I believe the um, owner for 2447 Noriega is here, and uh, would it be okay to return back to that case for comment? It will. I just wanted to ask the property owner that we just spoke with if uh, he had any additional questions or comments for... Okay. Thank you for coming in today. Oh, you're probably on Noriega. Oh, okay. Never mind. We have a different Noriega. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if no one else cares to speak on order number 201710, I will now close the case, and we can proceed with the next one. So order 201711, uh, it's the unaccepted right-of-way, 10 Selma Way. Uh, the address is 501 Noriega Way. And it's to consider any appeal um, for the property owner for the fine issued for the illegal removal of one street tree in the public right-of-way adjacent to 10 Selma Way. And the fine levied for illegal removal is $2,031. Uh, I just want to clarify the differences between the fine fine numbers uh, values because um, if they're issued prior to the fiscal year change, they can vary a little bit. Okay. Um, so we received a service request from a member of the public that a tree had been illegally removed. Um, so by the time we had gotten there, the tree was gone. But we went back and to Google Street View, and we found that this tree uh, directly next to the Selma Way stairs had been removed. And sorry, this is just a, the plan submitted by the owner of 501 Noriega for their construction, um, outlining the width of the public right-of-way um, the 25-foot wide public right-of-way, and the tree fell within that. Uh, the stairs are in the center, and the trees are directly adjacent to the stairs. So this actually constitutes as a street tree. Um, so even though it's an unaccepted right-of-way, we do maintain street trees and unaccepted right-of-ways, rights-of-way. Before you move from mm -hmm. this uh, picture, so that uh, the white strip that we see the green X centered in is yeah. actually the stairwell? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Okay, so then the the tree was in some kind of a planter in the middle of the stairs? It was. Or is it overhanging? So it was in that circle there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it wasn't in a planter. Those are just the plans kind of showing the public right-of-way width. Okay. And we superimpose the location of where, the estimated location of where the tree is would have been um, onto those plans, kind of showing that the tree is a street tree. Okay. Yeah. But basically, this, the stairs are the center of that public right-of-way. Yeah. And the public right-of-way is 25 feet wide. All right. So that's a street tree. Got it. Yep, so essentially, um, because unfortunately the plans are submitted showing that they understood that was a public right-of-way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, if you were to apply, you were to do construction around a tree, we require tree protection. Uh, if you need to remove a tree, you require a removal application. So this is where the tree was, and it's just not there. Um, and then here's our um, parcel map, essentially. This is our map viewer application, and it has all of the rights of way and um, parcels in the city. And so that's the Selma unaccepted right of way. That dotted line is the midpoint, um, showing that, that the midpoint to the property line was um, about 12 feet. So to be consistent with how we handle similar cases, um, a fine was issued for $2,031 for the illegal removal of one street tree. 
Can you go back to the previous photo, please? Yeah. So it appears that the property owner in constructed new stairs? Um, the stairs on the left, I believe, are the city stairs. So they're still they're still intact, but they're working on the in the public right of way there in between the stairs and their and their um, building. And what did they do with that space? Did they landscape it? It doesn't. I mean, it's just looks like I haven't been back since I've taken these photos. But when I took these mm. photos, it's just dirt. Um, so it just you know it looked like this. But they're constructing a new building on that parcel there. Mm -hmm. um, and so those stairs that we see in that previous photo or what we see on the very left hand side with the yeah they're the same stairs because they're city stairs so they they wouldn't be okay. um, doing work on them okay yeah so <clears throat> basically the stairs are the the center of the public right-of-way and the tree was right next to the stairs mm -hmm. so it's a street tree there so that space between their building and the stairs is public right-of-way Anything further? That's it. Okay. Uh, is the property owner present to speak today? Hi. Hi. Can you uh, state your name, sir? Uh, Fenbar Brody. Okay. And you uh, are the property owner? Yes. So I am building on that parcel, as you said, beside it. Mm -hmm. So my contractor, I talked to him, and he said he did not remove it. Um, I don't know if he did or he didn't. Um, he's saying he didn't. Um, he's saying that before he got there, that the, the, the sewer department uh, repaired the sewer because there's a sewer running up there. He thinks they might have removed it um, because they repaired some the sewer on that. There's a sewer running down that hill. Either way, I, I don't know, and I have no way of finding out at this stage. So um, in lieu of that, I, I mean, I understand I'm the property owner. I'm willing to attend the class or work with urban forestry to replace since it's in the right away beside my house mm -hmm. uh, put another tree there or work with them to do something i mean uh, ultimately i'm going to build a house there i'd like to do something on that side for landscape mm -hmm. I mean, anyway you know what i mean uh, did you see any evidence of um other than the construction that your uh contractor was doing any evidence of construction related to sewer repair in that area they, they did do it but it was at the bottom of the hill they replaced at the right beside the stairs they replaced concrete and stuff mm -hmm. so there was a sewer leak there and i don't know how, that was quite a while ago but that's yeah the sewer the here's the staircase Here's that part, that strip of, la strip of land where the tree was up here. Mm -hmm. Down here, the sewer comes down and runs across into a manhole on the street. And they did, rep uh, before I started construction, they replaced, they did some sewer fix at the bottom. Hmm. But I don't know anything about the top. Okay. So. Do you have anything to add? Sorry? Do you have anything to add, sir? Um, no, I'd just like to, instead of, in lieu of the fine, to uh -huh. try and work with them to replace, you know, plant a tree or go to the class or do something to, to, to you know, um, offset the fine. Okay. Um, we can ask the department if, uh, if that's acceptable. I believe there's a reduction in the, f in the fine if you take the class, uh, but we'll, we'll confirm that with them. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your time. Can I ask you a question, uh, Susan? Uh, Susan Aubrey, Urban Forestry. Can you uh, can you explain again how the the class works and what the what the if this gentleman um, applies for this fine or if he mm -hmm. attends this class, what kind of a reduction there would be? Yeah, um, it's a it's basically a rubric. Uh, it goes twenty five uh, to fifty percent reduction um, in the fine if they successfully complete the class, um, and we can look further into the rubric. Um, it, it goes. It basically goes in in multiples of twenty five percent. Okay. Basically, um, and I just want to point out that this this building is subject to our tree planting code already, mm -hmm. and so they've already submitted plans showing that they're going to be planting trees because mm -hmm. they're required to plant trees in the public right of way. Okay. Um, is there a? Pro it this is a little out, outside of the ballpark here, but if, as far as if PUC had done some sewer work and they were to remove a tree, would they have notified the Bureau prior to that? Or do they come and 
take trees out from the city without notifying the Bureau? Generally, our partners in the city would notify us if they need to work around a tree. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who cares to speak on this case? All right. I'll close this order and we'll move on to the next. Um, so, um, Chris Buck will be presenting this case today. Good morning, Chris Good morning. Buck with San Francisco Public Works, Bureau of Urban Forestry. <clears throat> um, so, uh, before we jump into this, this next case, a um, bunch of things I'd, I'd like to say, but uh, St. Francis Wood, which is the subject of this particular case, um, is really a great partner to Public Works Bureau of Urban Forestry, so it's a little awkward that we find ourselves in this setting today. Uh, our significant tree ordinance uh, was created in 2006, so until 2006, there's really no direct relationship between St. Francis Wood and the Bureau of Urban Forestry because St. Francis Wood, uh, essentially the roadway is the only part of the public right-of-way that's under the city's jurisdiction. So all the trees that we're gonna talk about today are in the sidewalk at the curb. Uh, in most neighborhoods, that would mean it's in the right of way and it's a street tree. However, though they're within the public right of way legally, and this has been vetted by the city attorney's office, the trees are considered to be the responsibility of the property owner and they're not under our jurisdiction as street trees. So what ends up happening is that we end up applying our significant tree code from the face of the curb going 10 feet in from face of curb. So they qualify as significant trees. And so I just wanted to put that out there. That's why we're here today, because t about like 13 years ago now, the trees are under our jurisdiction. They're the responsibility of St. Francis Wood, but they are treated as if they're street trees. They have the same protections as street trees. Okay. Um, and so for many years, we had no real direct relationship um, once our code started to apply to trees within 10 feet of the, the roadway, um, St. Francis Wood has really been a pretty good partner. Um, they have a lot of very large trees, as the name of the neighborhood would, would imply. Um, over the years, they plant a lot of large stature trees. They don't remove a lot of trees. And so I just you know, want to really put that out there that I'm not here to go mano a mano and um, and try to uh, build up things and, and you know, just get into, the, in, into sort of an adversarial relationship. I really wanted to acknowledge um, that I think generally they, they are absolutely trying to do the best thing for property owners and their community. And they only submit removal applications typically when it's really necessary. And so generally that's been our relationship um, and we're continuing to work together on a number of different removals throughout St. Francis Wood. So that sort of the setting and the backdrop for when um, this particular case came to, to light, we received a number of calls from the public when a number of trees, or specifically 33 trees within 10 feet of the public right of way, were excessively pruned on a number of streets in St. Francis Wood. Um, in our fine letter, we demonstrated that we have evaluated each tree individually and we have photos, multiple photos of each tree individually. I won't go through every single one of those photos today. Um, I think in some ways I'd rather step back and talk about a lot of the, the big important moving pieces here. Um, but to be consistent with how we've handled similar cases, we did issue the fine for excessively or illegally pruning uh, a street tree. And as uh, my colleague Susan Nawberry pointed out, in an ideal world, or not even an ideal world, in our pruning standards that are established by the American National Standards Institute, you wouldn't remove more than 25% of the living canopy. Now, today's discussion will focus on, well, what do you do if there's a, a potential failure risk that you want to mitigate? And that's really where we've been discussing with St. Francis Wood over the last several months. How much of these trees can be pruned to reduce that hazard? Um, and that's the dialogue that we wish had occurred prior to these trees being pruned in this manner. Um, but this is a view of Santa Clara Avenue, I believe it is, right, Susan? Um, just showing how the trees appeared to us in February when we began receiving complaints. 
Um, this is a different view from a different end of the street, but it's just showing what the trees look like before. So these are eucalyptus uh, species. And it's a large stature tree, for sure. Um, and again, the very large heading or topping cuts were made, removing all the foliage um, and a significant amount of, of all twigs and smaller and secondary branches. It generated quite a buzz. I'll show a couple of photos. We had, an, there was some social media coverage. Um, the Western chapter of the International Society of Arboriculture even showed photos on their uh, social media account just talking about the importance of proper tree maintenance. Um, and, I, and I would say, to be fair, some of that conversation, without knowing the history of the trees and the tree failures that St. Francis Wood was experiencing, um, to some degree can be unfair. Um, but it, it really uh, generated a lot of alarm. And again, we don't require coverage or social media posts for us to do our job. We just, it would have come across our attention. We go up and down Portola all the time. Um, so this is a typical, some of the mature trees in St. Francis Wood, it's even in some of their older literature, including this really amazing coffee table book, you can see culturally and historically that St. Francis Wood has done excessive or heavy pruning in the past. And so to a certain degree, they are caught in a catch-22. They've, they've made topping cuts before. Those sprouts have regrown. And now there's decay in many of those old injuries, those old pruning cuts. Um, so I think we're going to be agreeing on a lot of uh, things today uh, on, on the situation. Some more photos. This is uh, adjacent to 40 Santa Clara Avenue. Just showing again the, the topping cuts. And I'm sure, like any, you know, any large population, I'm sure there are folks within the HOA and residents who have differing views of, of how to manage the trees. It, it feels just like our role at, at Bureau of Urban Forestry. Um, so again, there have been multiple topping cuts at multiple heights within the trees. And I, I empathize with, with folks who are trying to figure out, well, what's the best way to manage these trees at this, at this point? I will note there were, a few, there were a handful of trees, perhaps about four trees of the 33 that hadn't really been topped before. So here's an example where the tree really had never been topped, but it was topped rather heavily. And my, I've been kind of involved a long time in the industry, and my sense is that there's probably a request for uniformity, like to have one tree not pruned a certain way um, wouldn't match. But in, in the urban forest, it's more conceptual. And so I'm just pointing out that there were a handful, four of the 33 that had never been topped before, essentially were, were excessively pruned for the first time. And here's another example of that. And these are a couple more examples of the, of the same thing where they had not been topped before. Um, so we're not at risk for you know, large stem failures. There, we do want to acknowledge, and I want to make it, just repeat myself over and over again, we're well aware that there have been many large branch and tree failures in St. Francis Wood. We take that seriously, and we have been processing other applications for removal. I know on Terra specifically, that one's lingered a while. We've had a, a few discussions about that. Um, we hope to resolve where we are with that particular application. But other applications, we have been approving trees for removal. Um, a big question here is how much of the canopy needs to be pruned in order to mitigate potential large limb failures? And no one can really answer that question, specifically say, oh, well, it's, if you reduce it 250 pounds or 850 pounds, um, that is something that you know, um, I think it's very helpful to admit we don't know as arborists. We don't, there's no exact weight limit number, and so the concern I, I've heard from San Francis Wood is, OK, even if we reduce the crown and keep 50% of the foliage up in the tree, we still have simply the weight of that long stem itself, which could cause failure. And that's something that um, we're discussing actively as, we, as they submit removal applications. Also, St. Francis Wood has been working on a multi-year plan for replacing what they uh, feel are the trees at highest risk of failure. And again, going back to the idea that 
if you look at San Francisco Wood, they've clearly cared for these trees quite a bit. They put a lot of resources. They've never done things that are grossly negligent. Um, they don't typically excessively prune trees. And so I do believe that they're, uh, like any manager, they're trying to navigate this process. And unfortunately, our preference would have been that their contractor contact us in advance. My, my sense is that we got a call maybe the day of or the day before this pruning was, was beginning to occur as a courtesy. We, we appreciate that. But to cut the trees in this aggressive manner really would have required, it's going to require, unless there is a specific public safety at stake, it, it would require a rather <coughs> robust conversation before we would agree to say, OK, go ahead and, and prune trees in this manner as a mitigation uh, short of actually removing the entire tree. So to be consistent with how we've handled similar cases, you know, was much more than 25% of the canopy removed um, with topping cuts? Yes. Uh, were they trying to mitigate absolute public safety issues for many of these trees? Yes. Um, but we have to issue fines the same way we've issued fines for other entities. And I will say the Asian Art Museum was here before us a couple of years ago. And unfortunately, they went below the old topping cuts and we had to issue a fine. So we have issued fines. It can be awkward when you're working with a partner who generally is, is trying to do good work. Um, one sort of cautionary note is the, the role of the tree contractor or arborist is, is really to educate the client. And I don't know the exact name of the company, but I, any resulting portion of this fine, St. Francis Wood could take and say, OK, our expert could have guided us better and said, you know what? I hear the momentum from HOA is saying, wow, we really need to address this. But I think if we do it this aggressively, we're going to get into more hot water. Um, so I think their contractor could have done a better job to raise red flags and say, wait, 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 I'm the professional here. I need to advise you on how this is going to go. I also commiserate with that contractor because it can be very difficult feeling like if I say no, someone else is just going to come in and say yes. But it's, it's really the job of the arborist, <clears throat> the, the professional, to try to navigate this process for, for the customer. And so I, that's my, I would say that's the one thing I wanted to point out where I feel like that, that could have gone better. But everything else I've said, I mean, I really do want San Francis Wood to understand that we see them as a, as a generally speaking, um, trying to be a good manager of their forest. Um, we have not had uh, many run-ins. We, we believe they've respectfully submitted removal applications when necessary. And we're currently trying to navigate a process with the tree removal and replacement program. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, we issued the fine because the trees were excessively pruned. But we're here to say that we recognize that they have a challenging um, tree management uh, challenge on their hands. And we'll see where we take it from here. Great. I, I have a few questions, if I may, sure. Mr. Buck. Um, so I, from, from, if I understand correctly, the Bureau of Urban Forestry has had frequent communications with St. Francis Wood HOA or some property management? C correct. Okay. We've, there's been, um, during some of this work, there we've received a, a few <clears throat> individual tree removal applications. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we've received a larger one for a number of trees. And do you feel that the Bureau has done an adequate job of educating the HOA since the passage of Prop E around the subject that tr prunings of, of trees is now within the, the purview of the city? Well, the challenge for this case is that the trees are not technically under our jurisdiction. Um, and, and to step back, St. Francis Wood is very, they're a great manager of their trees. And so St. Francis Wood is not on our radar as someone that needs that even, sort of outreach. Even though there's significant trees within 10 feet of the right of way, they're not responsibility of the city for pruning? They're not the responsibility of the city for pruning. But if someone wishes to pursue a tree removal permit, um, okay. that is in our jurisdiction. <clears throat> OK. So pruning is something that the HOA is responsible for. The arborist that they uh, retain for this service, you're not sure who they were. But since they do work in San Francisco, they should be aware of the 25% 
maximum? Correct. They would be they would be aware, and that would really be the key person to caution the HOA on on kind of their proposal for mitigating risk. And and what do you what do you feel the professional the licensing board would say about the work that the arborist or the the tree care sure. company did? Well, I, I to be truly honest, um, I think it's actually up for debate. So you have your tree pruning guidelines, your best management practices. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to mitigate risk, you can prescribe uh, pruning cuts that are not typical pruning cuts. But if your objective is to reduce risk, you can say, we're going to make uh, mm -hmm. pruning recommendations based on the ANSI standards that we recognize are not best management. Because in this case, we're pursuing hazard mitigation. Mm -hmm. um, but again, when it's this, this many trees on this sort of public scale, we would have, what we've done in the past sometimes is actually put out notices to the public. Like, hey, the work you're going to begin seeing here is something that's not typically approved, but we really want to let you know why, why it's being approved. And that's one of our sticking points here, is that the public sees this and then they just, someone in the Excelsior may go home and go, well, St. Francis Wood did it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not pointing out St. Francis Wood. That happens e everywhere. <clears throat> someone, just a single homeowner, pr tops their tree, and then the neighbor across the street thinks, okay, I can do that too. Um, but that's the challenge we have at the city is to make sure we're not, um, you know, that we're upholding our ordinance and protecting the trees as much as possible. One other question. Prior to the passage of Prop E, uh, before the city took responsibility, care and maintenance responsibilities from the property owners. If a property owner had topped a tree like this, say in 2014, when it was the property owner's responsibility to prune and maintain the trees, would the city have levied a fine? Correct. So we've been levying fines like this since 2006. Um, in this case, the tree is considered a significant tree. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the responsibility of the property owner, but within our sort of <clears throat> protective jurisdiction. Uh, okay. Park, Mer Park Merced is an example. Um, we've sort of gone through a similar process with Park Merced, mm -hmm. uh, where for years they didn't really need to work with us, and then in 2006 we had a similar situation come up. Mm -hmm. uh, in this situation, how would the street, the street tree care class apply if if they were interested would some members of the HOA sure required absolutely to take it, it would definitely apply um, our director <clears throat> and just sort of a larger picture Susan covered a lot of information in our our preamble our goal of public works someday is to never have to issue a fine you know we want to use the the carrot we want to use education and outreach um, mm -hmm. and so the director about two years ago when another you know single family homeowner came up to the director's office at City Hall and said, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was an issue. He said, we need to have a class just like traffic school. You know, like let's, we need to figure out a way so we can reduce these fines. <clears throat> um, and so we also have a full-time public information officer now. Mm -hmm. The emphasis really is on street trees in the public right of way. Um, but we could even look at increasing outreach regarding significant trees as well. Okay, so going forward, uh, you would ask that the HOA reaches out or asks the contractor to reach out to the Bureau prior to any prunings to Something strategize? Something that's gonna be, if it's not clearly, easily, you know, within the, the standard best management practices, reach out to us and it, it would be a lengthy conversation about Okay, how much do we do we agree? And, and again, it's as it's proven, it's not an easy conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, different professionals, um, reasonable me minds will disagree a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so there is there is definitely some uh, gray okay. area. But that conversation has never taken place to well, date. Aside from it, we it, want to remove a tree, how it, do we process? The it's yeah, the dialogue's been occurring um, since this time, and looking at how do we help the HOA and St. Francis would manage the existing trees moving right. forward. But prior to February or whenever the trees were pruned, there was no S Specifically not, not this level of, of pruning. Okay. Uh, and what would the discount be on this? Well, generally, if uh, someone attends a tree care class, the rubric recommends 50% reduction mm -hmm. um, for, for that amount. So that um, would be so approximately $33,500 reduction. Divided, yeah, so divided, divide that, that fine in half. Um, and that's something that the director and our public information officer 
kind of manages that rubric mm -hmm. just to keep it up our, out of our, our staff hands. And again, who would be required to attend that class? Well, it would really be anyone from the HOA and or a contractor, really any, any representative. Okay, great. Do you have anything to add? No, again, I just want to reiterate that I, you know, I, looking forward to the conversation. Um, I hope I made it clear that I, I think we still see ourselves as partners and trying to figure out how we, how we move forward. And they're, they're not easy management options that we're actively discussing. Mm -hmm. So, All right. Thank, thank you. you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sandy Kaplan. I'm representing the St. Francis Homeowner Association. First off, I want to thank Mr. Buck and the Bureau. Uh, we appreciate his comments. Uh, the association has been working and is continuing to work with the Bureau in maintaining its trees. What occurred on these particular trees is there really was a crisis situation, I think, that St. Francis Wood was facing. Uh, as you may have seen from the papers we submitted, there were branches that had been falling throughout St. Francis Wood, both along uh, Santa Clara Street, as well as in other locations throughout uh, St. Francis Wood. And these were trees that were coming down on people's houses. Uh, there's actually a lawsuit which St. Francis Wood is facing from trees that were coming down. And again, these are all trees that St. Francis Wood is obligated to maintain. As to the trees along Santa Clara, there were a number of branches that had already come down when the pruning took place. Uh, St. Francis Wood reached out to Northern Trees, which was its arborist for these trees. It had been working with them for a number of years and facing the crisis that it was for maintaining a safety for people along this location, these trees were pruned. Now, I should say that these trees were already in distress. They are probably at the end of their life cycle. Uh, the topping, they had been topped on numerous occasions over the last 30 or 40 years, and so they're subject to an overall review and ultimately a reforestation plan that is St. Francis Woods is working with the uh, Bureau uh, to apply. These trees that were topped have come back, uh, so there are leaves again, and that information I think was included in the information that was provided as part of our uh, appeal of the fine. Uh, since this occurred, uh, St. Francis Wood has been working with the Bureau both on tree removal but also on the uh, pruning of other trees so that we don't face a fine like this again. And so we have been working hand in hand on other trees throughout the association and in this location to reduce pruning. But of course, this all occurred in January and February we're having heavy, heavy rains. And so we really were in a situation of a life safety hazard on trees that is the association's obligation to maintain, the association's obligation to ensure that people aren't uh, gonna be injured. The association was receiving claims and reports from individuals in the association asking about what's happening. We're getting tree branches falling. What can we do to may mitigate the situation? And so the trees that were topped here really was a life safety response to a crisis situation uh, and we did rely upon our arborists on these trees. Uh, we are not topping other trees, and again, as we've said, we are continuing to work with the Bureau to maintain these trees. There's over five arborists now that the, the association has retained to work with it and the Bureau in either removing trees or topping trees. Finally, I should say that the fine of $67,000 is significant. That money needs to be directed towards its reforestation plan and its continued maintenance of its trees and will be a significant <clears throat> impotent if it, or injury to the association if it is fine for this amount of money because that money really is earmarked for its continued maintenance and plan for the, all the other trees in the association. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, your name is Andy Kaplan? San Sandy Kaplan. San yes. Sandy Kaplan. So we're an attorney for the association. Mr. Kaplan, what exactly are you asking of the department? Well, we're asking for that the fine be rescinded uh, and that the money be directed towards its reforestation plan and its continued pruning as it continues to work with the Bureau for the overall maintenance of the trees that the association has obligations to maintain, prune, and repair, and remove as appropriate. Okay. So uh, you are asking for a 100% dismissal of the fine amount? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, the difficulty of that, sir, is the matter of consistency in how the department um, applies fines, as the as the bureau um, representative mentioned. You saw in the prior in the prior two three cases there were illegal prunings, with um, in one case a seventy percent reduction of canopy. If we were to dismiss your fine, we would need to dismiss their fine, and essentially we would be dismissing practically all fines because any homeowner could make the argument that our arborist felt that these cuts were warranted. Um, so it's kind of that, as Mr. Buck said, that sort of back and forth about, well, what is an appropriate amount of cut for, the, for this particular tree? So, you know, I, I'm not sure that we can make that case. Uh, you're certainly welcome to lodge that, and I'll make note of that. However, there is this tree care class, which is an option for all constituents. Um, it's basically not necessarily an, an admission of guilt. It's just a, you know, I'm willing to take the class and learn more about proper tree care that the city is mandated and get a, get a discount. Is that something that might be appropriate for your HOA? Well, it, cer certainly I think our approach would be that we, the money that the fine is really necessary because of the crisis and the, <laughs> the situation that the city, that the association found itself in. Mm -hmm. This is not a situation where the city is obligated to maintain the trees. These are, as was explained by Mr. Buck, yeah. these are, <clears throat> it's a different situation. Although it falls under the tree guidance, as Mr. Buck explained, mm -hmm. it's St. Francis Woods that's obligated to maintain these trees. It's mm -hmm. St. Francis Woods that gets sued when a tree branch falls and injures somebody. And yeah. so we have a different situation than, as we heard in the other yes, appeals, I do agree. where you have, these are street trees. These are significant trees, <clears throat> and as they was explained, they do fall under this rubric of the city. Mm -hmm. But we've been working with St. Francis Wood and the, the Bureau hand in hand to come up with an overall forestation plan. As mm -hmm. to your question, certainly. If the only option is to have someone from the association attend the tree class, uh, certainly we would consider that. Mm -hmm. uh, as we said, we are trying to work not in any way adversarially with the Bureau. Right. But we do have an exception here because these are not street trees and the significant trees and the absolute hazard. And if you look through the materials that we supplied, you'll see evidence of tree branches falling down. And quite frankly, there is a lawsuit presently that San Francisco is having to defend because mm -hmm. a tree branch came down and hit a truck, and now there's a lawsuit over right. that. And so we have a certain life safety issue here mm -hmm. on not street trees, but trees that the association has been maintaining since they were planted 70, 80 right. years ago. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is an, a unique scenario. Um, nonetheless, without penalty process in place, the, you know, the the HOA could continue to make cuts as it right. wants to in the future. And hey, these are our trees, and well, we're, we don't fall under the rubric of. So I'm I'm cautious about making a recommendation of waiving the fine 100 percent because if we did that, what's to prevent this from happening well, again? Well, certainly. I guess the answer to that question is one, since this occurred, the association has been working with Mr. Buck and the Bureau hand in hand to ensure that they don't top additional trees. Now mm -hmm. we're into the spring. We don't have storms at the moment. And so other trees, nothing has been topped right. since this occurred. And the association isn't going out just you know, topping other trees. They are working hand in hand on both tree removal permits and tree pruning permits. And there's a number of trees where we've gone to the Bureau now and said, how do you want us to prune them? And so it's not mm -hmm. a situation where it's gonna occur again. And certainly if it did occur again, we'd be back here and we'd say, well, you know, you were mm -hmm. told once you can't mm -hmm. do this again, but that's not the scenario. And as the Bureau acknowledges, this is really a partnership. And the partnership is going beyond these trees. There's a number, these trees, these eucalyptus trees are old. Mm -hmm. They are in, a number of them in a series of decline. And so there is a very robust reforestation plan that is being worked out hand in hand on this. And so I think we have a unique situation in this case where we had a life safety issue. We relied upon an arborist who we've been working with for 20 years to deal with these trees, but we're not, this is not something that will occur again. And in fact, the evidence is we're continuing to work hand in hand with the Bureau on different pruning methods to ensure that as we go into the next winter, that we don't have 
problems with tree branches. But quite frankly, even last week, there was a tree branch that came down on someone's property. And so mm. we have, these are, these are the association's obligations. They have to be very proactive, and they're working with the Bureau to deal with these situations now. But we found ourselves in January and February with extreme weather mm -hmm. and a real hazard situation along the street that justified this one exception. Is, uh, is someone from Northern Trees here today? We are not, but we do have Mr. Paul Hill, who is the Park and Rec Chairman. He kind of oversees the tree process in St. Francis Wood, and he can speak if you'd okay. like. We also have Mr. Dave Muffley, who is an arborist, not with Northern Trees, but an arborist also here who the association is working with as they deal with both the pruning of the trees mm -hmm. and tree removal permits as we come up with trees that have to be removed because they're either a hazard, they're dangerous, they're dying, and we're working hand in hand to have those trees removed. Is, uh, are you aware if the HOA reached out to Northern Trees after they received communication from the Bureau about we have, the fine? We and we were not able to contact them. I mean, we're not using them currently mm -hmm. any longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be curious to know what, what their we, response would be. We reached out be. to them, and they just not, did not get back to us when we ran into this issue. Have you considered passing the bill along to them? Well, Maybe contacting just, the board? Well, c certainly if, if it's occurred, but it's a significant cost to go ahead and uh, turn that bill. Agree. And and truly, this is money that is important funds for St. Francis Wood to manage the trees that it's obligated to manage. It's okay. not turning to the city on this. And so um, those are the situations, I think, that we find ourselves in that are unique and different than the other appeals that we've been hearing today. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No. I appreciate your time. Good, thank you. Uh, I understand we have a member of Rec and Park Department. I'm sorry. I am uh, Paul Hill. I am uh, on the St. Francis Wood Homes Association board. I am their chair for Parks and Parkways. Okay, you're so. the chair of Parks and Parkways. Yes, okay. I was last year and I am again this year. So um, a couple of things I wanted to uh, talk about. Um, uh, Chris talked about how uh, the significant tree ordinance went in, and we were contacted, I believe, in about 2008 when we were trying to remove a tree mm -hmm. that, in fact, our trees fell under significant tree ordinance. And so since that time, every tree that has been removed has always been through the process. So mm -hmm. they educated us that removals are under their jurisdiction. They need a permit, so we do. As he mentioned, they never spoke to us about significant pruning being under that same status, that there was no uh, education there. Since that time, since we discovered um, uh, following this pruning that, in fact, they, they have jurisdiction over that uh, uh, work, we have done we have worked with them considerably. So this happened in February, everything stopped. We stopped doing the trees we were working on. We began doing a tree at a time, which would come, Susan and Chris would come and review. Finally, it took us four months to come up with a way they like them pruned. And so now we have a company that we have hired that will start in September pruning the rest of our old eucalyptus to a version that is, is more acceptable to them. So once the education occurs, once we were aware that the city felt that they had jurisdiction over that, um, we ha have followed suit. Um, we, uh, the, I, I love the, the SF Street Trees map, which shows those 200,000 trees, which you guys have been maintaining for a few years. But we have been maintaining our trees for 100, over 100 years. We've been working on these. We've spent you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars we, uh, on the work. Um, there's a picture that was submitted earlier for, uh, in documentation showing that the, these trees had been topped originally back in the 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. So when Susan talks about the damage that does to the tree and that ostensibly kills the tree, we have spent money keeping those trees alive for 75 years. So, so we finally had reached a point where they simply felt that um, so, so many things were happening with those trees that they, they felt they needed to be pruned in this way. Um, the other thing um, uh, Chris talked about is that if they were to do something like that, they would notify the public. And, and as he mentioned, we notified them that we were doing it. We sent the assessment from Northern Trees about these are the, this is what we're going to do and this is why we're doing it. We also, since we think the public to us 
is us, since we own the trees, so they weren't street trees, they weren't the general public. We notified everybody in the neighborhood. Messages went out to the 560 homeowners that we were doing this work, so they were aware of it. All of the comments come from people who drove through our neighborhood who don't live in our neighborhood who's going, what's going on here? Because they didn't get the notice because we didn't know we needed to notify them. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we found out that, uh, as we discovered online, that the Bureau of Urban Forestry was upset with us, we contacted them immediately. We stopped all the work we, and we have done. So the, the intent was there to do this the right way. It mm -hmm. just appears as if, uh, um, we sort of fell into an odd little gap in mm -hmm. the way this was done. You know, when, when you talk about the, the trees that were earlier today, those are street trees. These are not street trees. Mm -hmm. So are, have, the, have there been indications of fines for significant trees where you have re, uh, reversed uh, fines on work that's done with significant trees as opposed to a street tree? Setting, forgiving our fine does not set a precedent for forgiving everybody else's fines. Because it's a different I'm, kind of a tree. Right. I'm not sure if the situation that exists in St. Francis Wood exists in too many neighborhoods in San Francisco. Co correct. That's part of our problem, too. <clears throat> That's a good thing, we think. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, got a, you, got, you get an extra 2,000 trees on your tree map that, that nobody else is doing. So the, uh, you mentioned that Northern Trees had contacted the Bureau. It sounds like they contacted the Bureau the day they proceeded with the work. Are you aware of that? Yeah, uh, I, uh, the, the timeline there is a little uh, uncertain for me, but I know mm -hmm. they were informed in, in January that this was happening. Okay. Um, and you're I, no longer going to use tree, Northern so, Tree? Uh, Northern Trees, the head of Northern Trees had a medical issue, so he mm. needed to stop working with us. They are still going, but they, he has taken a break for a number of months. He's mm -hmm. just coming back from mm -hmm. that now. So. And I guess I would ask you the question that I asked Mr. Kaplan. Did you, when you received this fine, did you reach out to Northern Trees and say, hey, you know, you apparently the city's bureau is telling mm -hmm. us that what you did um, contravened uh, the standard maintenance of care for trees by exceeding the canopy cuts by more than 25%. Did you do any kind of communication or outreach with the company? They, they do know that this is happening, that, that this has, has mm -hmm. gone on, but I, I think we took the, uh, the point of view that like Harry Truman, the buck stops here, that we, we could have stopped them from doing it if we thought they were wrong in doing it. They were doing what we wanted them to do. Yeah, I mean, in many cases, you know, I wouldn't know what the yeah. right standard of tree care is. I'd assume that the professional I contacted would know mm -hmm. what the appropriate amount of, of maintenance work would be. So I'm not sure I, I appreciate that comment, but I think the buck actually stops with personally with the, uh, the professional that you hired. And I'm assuming you paid them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. These are considerably tall trees and would require yes. a lot of equi equipment and heavy trucks, et cetera, to get to, to the upper canopy. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? Uh, that's it for me. Okay. And as a member of the HOA... Um, I can take that class. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do we have anyone else uh, that would like to speak on this case? Uh, does the Bureau have anything else to add? Uh, Chris Buck, Bureau of Urban Forestry. Uh, just w a couple brief follow-up items. I did want to clarify that we are, uh, we, it took a while to settle on the best, uh, we're piloting some pruning of trees that have not been pruned yet. Mm -hmm. And it took a couple of rounds of meeting on site, looking at the trees collectively, having the contractor do some work. The first round, um, we felt like it was Again, a little bit of mixed opinions and mixed feedback from our own staff on, is that too much, is it too little? Mm -hmm. Felt like it was still a little too aggressive, so we did another round of like, okay, let's you know, ease up a little more canopy, lateral branches, won't get into all the technical detail, but so um, that process has been occurring. It did take a little while, um, and the HOA has act, absolutely been very proactive in making sure that happens. And just as a working for our department, we wanted to make sure that we're helping them address these safety concerns, because if we're perceived as slowing them in this process to address public safety, that's clearly going to get very awkward legally if, if, if great harm uh, comes to pass. And then just I kind of wanted to put it out to both you and the, the uh, St. Francis Wood representative is that 
big picture, um, I totally appreciate your your stance on you know really kind of narrowing in on on where this resulting decision, how it might all play out. Um, but just reminding everyone that you know the director is well aware of the case. There are examples where, in a number of different cases, um, maintenance funds are sort of factored in a resulting decision, um, and that decisions can be reduced. Um, the the fifty percent is just sort of can be on top of other reductions, um, but just sort of want to reassure all parties in the room that I, I think this case is high visibility enough that it's going to get a due course. Um, review before mm -hmm. you know a recommendation is made for the director um, and if there's ends up being any questions about that I, I, I can certainly follow up and, and let you know about some of the different cases and circumstances mm -hmm. um, without again those decisions are, are beyond us the staff level we want there to be a clear you know distinction between that um, but I can speak to cases that uh, where where resulting decisions are um, based on those specific circumstances, because I I just want to reiterate that there is a public safety concern to to this component. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else care to speak today? Hi. Morning. My name is Dan Everest. I'm a, a resident of St. Francis Wood. Uh, I didn't coordinate my appearance here with any of the other folks from St. Francis Wood. But what I'm not hearing here is the life-threatening aspect of what's been going on with those trees. The two cases that were presented earlier, nobody got hurt by what those trees were doing. The trees may have been hurt, but they were not endangering anybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, one Sunday last October, one of those eucalyptuses let go corner of Terrace and Santa Clara. Half of it ended up in the road blocking Santa Clara. A quarter of it chased my dog and I, missed us by a few feet. To be fair, if we'd stepped a foot to the other side, we could have watched it go. But had it fallen on us, St. Francis Wood would have been encumbered with a huge liability, life-threatening. So I think that's a big factor. I think $67,000 should be spent towards reforestation, helping us with our responsibility for these trees to improve the uh, situation. So I don't see a relationship between the fine for St. Francis Wood and the kind of fines I saw for the other cases. That's just the only point I wanted to make. Thank you. Are there any more public comments on the items of today's agenda? If you've spoken, you will not be allowed to speak again. Uh, this is for those of you who may have come late. I think everyone was here roughly at the same time. Uh, if there's no more public comments, I will now close this hearing. Thank you for attending today. Have a great day.